Bob Johnson. I'm president of Omega Optical, as well as the uh, Delta Energy Group of Delta Industries. Uh, today, I want to uh, do a little uh, discussion uh, and introduction to uh, this waste fuel fluid uh, burner that uh, we've been working on for the last five years. Uh, the idea is to uh, consume uh, used uh, fossil fuels uh, such as engine oil, cutting oil, transmission fluids, uh, etc. Uh, as uh, a good source of uh, 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 home heating uh, for the winter time. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the approach is not to attempt to uh, burn uh, entirely waste, but to proportionately mix waste liquids uh, with number two fuel oil. Uh, the ratio uh, typically between 10 and 20 percent. Uh, that means uh, a typical household can go through um, the waste oil they might generate uh, plus a little more. Uh, and uh, it can result in uh, savings of uh, uh, anywhere from $700 to a couple thousand dollars a year, uh, especially when considering the cost of uh, disposal of the uh, <coughs> used uh, hydrocarbon fluids. So uh, the, <coughs> the system is primarily made of a, uh, a, a 20 liter storage tank, um, which uh, holds enough uh, to typically uh, burn for uh, a matter of uh, a week or two um, <clears throat> in uh, a moderate sized house. Uh, the uh, mounting flange to mount the uh, proportional uh, <clears throat> metering pump. Uh, which uh, gives very precise uh, amounts of uh, the waste fluid uh, mixed into the, uh, the number two fuel oil. Uh, it should be everything needed here to connect up uh, the system to your fuel tank. Uh, and burner, uh, and it's a quite uh, quite simple hookup. Uh, essentially, if you have uh, a furnace with the burner uh, and uh, an oil tank, uh, typically this is a 275 gallon. Uh, tank. Uh, the, uh, the, the first step, well, uh, obviously the first step is to, to turn the power off to the, uh, <clears throat> the furnace. Uh, that can be done by hitting the uh, safety emergency shutoff, the red switch by the furnace door. Uh, <clears throat> also best to disconnect the or open the circuit breaker so there's no potential of uh, anything being live but the safety switch should uh, remove all power from all the uh, the furnace circuits uh, as well as circulators or blowers uh, <clears throat> so uh, the next step is to build a shelf uh, which uh, should have some uh, a good support uh, to hang, to hold the uh, the tank uh, and uh, the tank wants to be slightly above the level of the uh, fuel oil tank uh, and that's just in case there's a uh, overfill of the tank uh, and uh, the metering pump allows some reverse flow. Shouldn't do that, but it's just a precaution. Uh, 
the <clears throat> on top of the tank is the mounting bracket and then the metering pump uh, and uh, essentially that's the the physical uh, the physical arrangement the uh, there's going to be uh, a draw tube uh, comes up into the metering pump and a feed tube that comes down and tees in so out of the oil tank there should be a filter and a line running to the furnace burner uh, and you'll put a T uh, after the filter. Uh, <clears throat> I've included a spreadsheet to calculate uh, the settings uh, on um, uh, setting up the system and the the goal is to have uh, the furnace fire on uh, straight kerosene or number two fuel oil uh, and come up to temperature before the mixture uh, is injected through the nozzle. Uh, <clears throat> My experience is there's no need to adjust the nozzle. The uh, nozzle that uh, uh, works for number two fuel oil will work fine for the diluted uh, 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 heavier hydrocarbon and number two. Uh, <clears throat> the, so uh, a, the spreadsheet does a calculation of how long it'll take uh, an injected fluid at the beginning of the line to pass through uh, into the burner uh, <clears throat> and uh, what you want to do is to set the cycle time such that the metering pump uh, shuts off in enough time for the line to uh, flush out uh, and uh, give a uh, clean burn at the end of the burn cycle. Uh, again, uh, I haven't found it to be a problem not doing that, but it's a precaution to make sure that the, uh, any buildup of carbon uh, on the burner is minimized. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the uh, we now have the physical orientation, uh, a, a, a pipe connecting, uh, the, uh, there's a time delay uh, relay uh, which will uh, bring power from uh, the furnace control box uh, to um, the metering pump. Uh, and uh, that uh, power simply comes from the control box's contactor for the uh, for the burner. Uh, the, so, uh, if you find the uh, two 110 volt uh, terminals that deliver power to the uh, to the blower uh, pump burner uh, uh, arrangement, uh, it will be a matter of just uh, tapping into those, uh, uh, those connectors uh, to provide power to the metering pump. Uh, the metering pump uh, only draws about 100 milliamps, uh, so uh, it shouldn't uh, have any uh, impact on uh, you know, any uh, circuit breakers or uh, current protection uh, in the furnace. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, we now have uh, the physical orientation, the uh, uh, fluid flow, and the power flow. So, uh, I guess uh, that's a quick, uh, a quick overview of the system. Uh, it, um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to go through uh, a separate uh, step of uh, walking through the actual uh, installation. So uh, uh, you can certainly uh, come back and review this information or uh, uh, follow on uh, and see the actual installation itself.
So, um, uh, I hope you're as satisfied as we are with the, uh, the value uh, and the uh, operation that the system has provided us. Uh, thanks again for watching and I uh, hope your system works uh, uh, without uh, any uh, issues. Bye now.